There are those moments when you're a guy in the game, when you're trying to prove to yourself that you can be good at this, that you can actually get results, and those moments under pressure with chicks where you either man up or you fail, and we call those quantum moments, and we have them all the time, especially on the four-week natural programs all over the world, and in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you what they are, what they look like, what you can get from them, what to avoid so you don't regress and go backwards in your game, and how to beat them, both to grow super fast, to demonstrate attraction, and to start to get the results with women that you want. Join me on a little trip around Melbourne as we explain this concept to you. Now you know that in the four-week natural I teach four main things. You are enough, the four times rule, the front door rule, and screening. Now the quantum moments, it really applies to the four times rule. When you're, you're in a position of pressure or uh, social stress or self-consciousness where you know that you should take an action that's going to require bravery and acceptance, right? So bravery and acceptance, you, are, are you gonna make the approach? Are you gonna go for the phone number? Are you going to walk with that girl out of the club and then propose for the after party, the date, go for the, the number, whatever it's gonna be. These quantum moments are really, really important in you know, the pickup game and your development in the pickup game because they're the defining points where in terms of quantum, you can be two things at one time. You can both be the self that you wanna be in your future, the one that you're reading about and learning about and learning from our videos, or you can be the self that you've been in the past. So in that very moment, when you see you know, a girl over there at the grocery store or at your college campus or in the club and you're scared to approach, you're gonna have that quantum moment. Are you gonna be the kind of person who stays the same or acts into the future? Now, tie that into what chicks are attracted to and that is male behavior, male behavior patterns. So if you're a confident, risk-taking, self-trusting, stimulation-pursuing type of guy, then by you taking those actions, the things that you can learn clearly from here on the internet and also from our info videos on fourweeknaturalworld.com, then in that moment, it's, it's a little bit scary as a coach when I've got my students because a student can get into all of these quantum moments and under that pressure, they can reaffirm that they're introverted and going backwards in the game and almost like solidifying their introverted, maybe negative, maybe bitching out personality. Or at the same time, you know, they might actually fail one of their attempts to start a conversation or ask for the phone number or even hold a girl's hand, whatever it might be. They might make that attempt. And in that moment, they've got the, the fear and the pressure and they don't know if the girl's gonna go for it, but under that pressure, they still reach their hand out, try to take that girl by the hand or offer to bring her to the bar for a drink. And even though you're scared, they actually do it. And you gotta realize, Remember, we're talking about this from the girl's point of view. The girl's gonna be perceiving you. And here you are as perhaps a socially inexperienced dude, and she can read that clear as day in the same way that you can look around wherever you are right now, school, college, or whatever, and you can see everybody around you, and you, you can tell a lot about a person just by looking at them. The girl is gonna look directly at you, and she's gonna know <clears throat> that you're trying to be something that you're not, right? Or that you have had a history of being introverted or not super popular or not sleeping with dozens of girls, and she can feel that yes, you come from a, maybe a place of scarcity, but here you are acting like you wanna be in a place of abundance. So you're gonna supercharge your learning curve to either solidify the negative personality or to strengthen the positive personality, and you're also gonna supercharge your ability to demonstrate attraction by making those moves or asking for those compliances under those pressures where you feel freaked out. They are the quantum moments, okay, when you could bitch out or you could man up, right? Now there's many, many, many different types of moments and there's also like a kind of a, a management of how much effort you put into different things and what's reasonable and what's unreasonable. I wanna break that down. But you'll know it, get a picture of this in your head right now. You will, you've been with a girl recently in the past, maybe you're on a date or you're in a club or you're at a festival or something and you, it occurred to you, you got the idea, or maybe you got a hint from the girl herself to go for that makeout. That's a quantum moment. You're like, ah, oh, I could go for this 
and everything's going to be scary and dramatic. I might get rejected or I could just stay the same. And you know from these pickup videos that you should do it. Whether you do it or not really determines very heavily how the girl's going to feel about you, how you feel about yourself and how much progress you're going to make in the game. So let's break it down even further. One issue that students have all the time is they, or you, will tend to think that you're not approaching enough or you're missing opportunities. You know, maybe you're commuting to work every day and you see girls on the train or at work or whatever, and you think, oh no, I feel like a bitch because I'm not approaching every single attractive girl. This is not that, okay? It's unreasonable for you to run down the street after every girl that you talk to. It's unreasonable to try to escalate on every girl in a club that you go to or a party. It's don't beat yourself up over that, okay? This is not like, you're not gonna become more of an introverted, uh, negatively social type of person by not actually making the approaches. It's, it's when you're in the approach. It's when you're in the approach, um, and choose them carefully, choose them sparingly. I also tell some of my, some of, ugh, it's so cold out here in Melbourne that I can't even move my mouth. I tell some of my most enthusiastic students they're only allowed to do three approaches today. So to think about it, have some empathy and make those approaches count. So when you do your approaches and they count, I want you in those approaches to identify those quantum moments, okay? Now, some of the ones to really think about and look, look out for are obviously not ejecting the set too early, okay? Other ones are playing it safe in the conversation. Other ones are asking for the contact details. And furthermore, it might be actually escalating the, the, the interaction for a drink or holding hands or going to dance or uh, you know, becoming a little bit more physical in the situation if you're in a nightclub or a party or something like that. So imagine this, quantum moment number one. When you're talking to a girl and you know, you've done the approach and that's really good, you prove something. You've pr <laughs> it's freezing out here, man. It's like, a, 12 degrees Fahrenheit um, and you go over and you do the approach the first thing is a lot of people tr tend to play it really safe with their conversation so you'll be there in the conversation having a boring mundane interview type matter of fact no emotional spike type of conversation and you'll know that your conversation is a little bit boring but you'll be scared to risk doing something exciting in the conversation like saying I think you're cool um, you're intimidating, you're, you're super cute, um, I'm really proud that I came to speak to you. Those kind of things are saying, I'm a guy who's interested in you, but most people in that quantum moment, they won't actually say anything and they'll keep it as a kind of a friendly, only a friend zone type of conversation. Furthermore, in the conversation, you might be thinking to yourself, I've come this far, I don't want to screw it up, but you'll actually, as I said, reinforce not being good with chicks by not putting your hand on the girl's shoulder, taking the girl by the hand. If you, you know, you've screened and you know that she's single, um, not asking her for the drink. So you'll be sitting there in that situation, maybe you're having a long, long conversation and maybe you did offer to buy the girl a drink, but you kind of get like even deeper down this, tr you know, uh, it's almost like a choose, choose, your, choose, choose your own adventure type of story with the girl. Check my hair. Um, and you get to the point, you don't want to lose the story because you've got so far. But the thing is, remember what the girl is looking for. She needs to have an exciting type of interaction and you need to be an exciting type of person for her to be attracted to you, drawn to you and engaged in you. And so, this, this is, I'm really talking a lot about like playing to not lose here as well, which is so common for so many guys who turn to these sorts of videos in order to, to take their game to a higher level. So, those moments where you, you kind of sit on it safely, right? That's not good. Procedurally, when you're in the nightclub, you've got a good conversation going, maybe the girl has agreed to have a drink with you, you've met her friends, she's met your friends, you're dancing around a little bit together, which is what we call sexy girl dance time. Then a huge quantum moment comes when you need to show her that you're interested in her by going for that make out. Now I'm thinking about like parties, nightclubs, people are drinking, people are dancing, a lot of opportunities to approach and People are, you know, very open, forgiving, expressive, uh, even sloppy. So you're allowed to be a little bit 
you know, expressive. I'm, I'm always worried about consent and don't go trying to make out with people or don't go trying to become intimate with people who you don't barely know. But in a nightclub after speaking for a while, meeting her friends, being comfortable in one another's, each other's space, you're going to be in a state of almost intimidation, this fear of not losing it. And for, for the record, that fear of screwing up uh, with a, an attractive girl is not so much about the girl. That trigger inside of your own mind, that comes from you being worried that some bigger guy who might own her in a tribal sense or her father or her boyfriend or her ex is going to come over there and really start a conflict with you. So that intense nervousness, it's, it's not, it, that fear comes more from like fear of society and other men that might hurt you rather than the girl. But the girl, uh, the girl is kind of like the female crocodile, right? She is very, very happy to have multiple guys giving her attention and also vying to see who's going to make the most fuss over her, who's gonna, you know, butt heads and clash. So she's actually pretty happy to put you under pressure to see what you're made of, both because it excites her, um, it's, it makes the interactions thrilling, and you demonstrate your attraction. So at the end of the night, when it comes time to go for that makeout or, uh, you know, ask her to go to the after party, ask her to go share an Uber, go to the casino, go to a restaurant, go to a late night cocktail bar, you need to almost go, you have to go all in. And I know that this is a little bit further down the, the quantum moment trail of all these kind of like hurdles that you go along the way. But I, I get it as well. No, no word of a joke, but I still get it when I'm talking to a really cute girl and I think I don't want to screw this up because I would love to have this beautiful, funny, positive energy in my life the worst thing I can think of right now is losing it. And I think to myself, am I going to be a brave person? Am I going to be uh, dashing? Am I going to show her that she's worth my taking a risk and my screwing with my emotions? Do I trust myself to make a mistake and then recover that mistake in case it comes off wrong or it gets misinterpreted badly or other people laugh at me for making that move? Or am I going to be polite and introverted and play it safe? What kind of a person am I? Now, as a pickup coach, I've been doing this for years and years and years, and I've got a lot of experience with nice girls, but here's you. You know, you, you may be a virgin watching this, or you may be really dissatisfied with the quality of girls that you've been meeting, and finally you meet a really, really attractive girl. The fear of loss before you've even, you know, got some traction or got some rapport or intimacy with this person, the fear of loss is immense. It's much more stronger. <laughs> the fear of losing an opportunity is almost more strong than the possibility of gaining uh, a connection with a girl, right? So we'll talk a little bit more about that, those, those, those fearful emotional moments where you need to make that move, go for that make out, ask for that date with that scary girl, what it looks like, how to deal with it, and more than that, be really ready for the repercussion. You are allowed to request a second attempt. You're allowed, you're allowed to appeal that decision. You're allowed to, okay? And it's a fair thing to do in life. You're allowed to appeal the decision twice, but you're not allowed to appeal the decision a third, a fourth time, right? So you are, you are allowed to try one, two, three attempts. So say, for example, you are going to ask, you know, go for, go for a makeout with a girl that you've been speaking to at a party for a while, and you're getting some pretty good indications of interest. You know, just having a long conversation. You know she's single. Um, you've got, you're, you're comfortable in each other's physical space. We have to be very conscious of consent nowadays, of course, at all days. And you're about to reach in for that makeout, not knowing what's going to happen, but just be prepared for the recoil, and that will give you the edge to deal with your own self-consciousness and fear that will naturally be occurring to you when you're going for a girl who you feel is a little bit out of your league, and that's completely normal and natural. And what you might do, it, like if you were declined, you know, both your attempt to go for a makeout and your appeal, your first appeal when you go for the makeout, even though the first makeout didn't work. Be smug. Be content that you were brave in that you did something that you felt was really scary, really made your heart race, you got butterflies in your stomach. And if you then say to the girl who's going to be very understanding and who's, who's also scanning you in that quantum sense, she's scanning, are you the introvert? that I sense that you might be, or are you a brave guy, a man on a mission, a man with a plan, a guy with a future, a guy on the up, or are you that guy on the up? So if you sit there and you're like, well, I'm gonna pat myself on the back for being brave here, 
um, because you're intimidating and I, you know, I really admire you. Um, I can see you've got so many great qualities. You're so self-respecting. You're certainly well put together. Um, but I feel really, really proud that I, I went for that. And in that moment, in those moments, the quantum moments, the girl is going to see, hold on, this guy didn't freak out under pressure. He hasn't shied away under his own impression that that's what he's resigned to in life. Like, he's destined or supposed to be rejected. And when you acknowledge the fact that you are allowed to be declined, but you feel brave that you've made those moves, you're, there's going to be life in that interaction, even though you might, may not have had the phone number, the date, the make out, the after party that you wanted, right? It's all about you facing your own bravery, and that's noticed by the girls that you're talking, you're talked to, and that's the way that you respond to what is essentially a test. That quantum moment where you, instead of playing to not lose, you play to win under the right constraints of consent, right? Being aware that everyone has the right to say no, but you know you've done something that will give you butterflies and scare you and scare the shit out of you. But even then, you've felt really, really good about it, and you know you can compliment the person who you've made and you know you've gone out of your way you've risked embarrassing yourself you've risked breaking your own heart uh, for somebody who's worth those risks and remind them that they were worth those risks and that will count for a lot you know you'll you'll earn some respect and you'll also redefine who you actually are because of the new the new actions that you're taking both respectfully and bravely and facing your own bloody fears your own i almost want to say a swear word there but it's not good for youtube to say swear words anyway so there's some things to think about. We'll better skate to our next destination and break it down. Couple more points, and then I gotta get back to, uh, back to work. Let's bring it all back to the purpose of this video, that quantum moment. And while, yes, it will you know, definitely help you get getting results in your dating and pickup game, it's, it's all about how you relate to yourself and how you think about yourself. If in those moments of pressure, do you ask for the phone number? Do you propose the after party? Do you go for the make out? Do you get a little bit more courageous and adventurous with your conversation? It's, it's a matter of discipline. If you know that you shouldn't you know, waste money on gambling and you know that you shouldn't eat candy and junk food because it's gonna make you feel horrible and it's gonna take your, you know, your body and your physique back, that quantum moment, and you, you'll, you'll have these quantum moments all the time in all, all areas of life where you think, okay, I'm either gonna be A, brave, or B, lazy. And if you're gonna be brave, you're gonna reinforce, you're gonna go in the right direction. The problem is that bravery, you don't know what's on the other side because you're doing things you haven't done before that you've learned from other people, namely people that you're learning from online or people that uh, you've read about. And we're all the most scared of the unfamiliar. Okay, so you're going into the land of the unknown with more attractive girls, you don't know about the social pressure that's gonna come. But trust me, as long as you're living in, you know, a safe society that we're living in here, Australia, the United States, Europe, uh, you know, the, the Emirates, any of these places, everything's gonna to be totally fine. But start to recognize those moments in your own dating game where you feel that moment, you might be standing with your wingman, you, you both might be really inexperienced and you see an opportunity and you think to yourself, that's a moment. I'm having a moment right now where me and my wingman were seeing a couple of really attractive girls and it's scary. We've learnt that we should go and push our comfort zones and do approaches and four times rule and use range of emotions, all that stuff. And you will feel fear, but what you're looking for is to prove to yourself that you can beat those quantum moments. You and your wingman, you and your coach, you on your own, you know, you might be at the grocery store and there's a really attractive chick uh, in your demographic and you think, all right, I'm going to go and face this quantum moment, I'm going to take action. And it actually doesn't even matter about the outcome. It matters that you're willing to be brave in those pressure situations, face your fear, and then really give yourself a sense of congratulations that you evolved yourself in that moment, on that day, and that should be a huge rush and a thrill and a victory, ir irregardless of the actual outcome of the interaction that you're having in your you know, pickup and dating game. It's all about personal development and it's really, really important, this playing to not lose or staying the same or you know, bitching out that you don't reinforce the negatives or the small part of the personality or your introverted side. You don't reinforce that by 
bitching out on a consistent basis because some people will, will join the pickup industry, the pickup community, and they'll actually become a far weaker, lesser, and more introverted person because they start to reinforce that they are a hard case newbie and they can't do certain things that they should be able to. They, they'll go and get rejected thousands of times. They won't make a move thousands of times. They'll play it safe thousands of times and they'll solidify their personality rather than grow it and expand it and evolve from being introverted and beta to extroverted, brave, courageous, and alpha. And of course, as we all know, brave, courageous, and alpha, they're the guys who are naturally attractive. But that's it. Have a really good think about those moments of pressure, both you know, in your dating life and in life, you know, when you should do the hard yards, be disciplined, and put into practice some of the things that you've learned that oftentimes scare you, not because it's just a hot girl in a social situation under pressure from other guys and your friends and your own self-expectations, but the biggest, the biggest fear is doing the unknown, right? And yes, you will survive. I am here as a coach, an online coach and a live coach. I remind my students on the four-week natural that it will be okay. You are allowed to do that. I've got your back. These things are normal. You are capable of that. You're a human being in you know, a fair and equal society. You are allowed to take those kind of risks in a way that um, you might have been scared to do yourself. So you know, that's the most important thing. When you're learning something from somebody else, you're, you're stepping into the unknown, either you know, in the gym or financially or tr- you know, following a tour guide when you're traveling to find excitement, to better your life, to push your comfort zone, to seek thrills. But of course, the unknown is, is really scary and uncomfortable and I'm here, or we're here as the pickup community telling you that you are allowed to do these things, that you are allowed to step into your unknown, the, the, the great unknown and your, your fear zone, your uncomfort zone, the things that'll scare you the most. And you know, heed our advice, but of course also, as I always say, think about one day coming and working with me in person, doing a four week natural where I'm there by your side saying, mate, you'll be okay, you'll be totally fine. Look, I'll do it, I'll demonstrate it. Oh, look, now, now you can go there and speak to these kinds of people as well. And I remember like just this weekend, mega, mega breakthroughs with our students. Um, one guy who's like, he's only two weeks into the program, he pulled in Melbourne City, um, a, a, an amazing New Zealand girl from day game. They met in the afternoon, they walked around all, all afternoon, they went to dinner, they went to a bar, and then they ended up at one of their places. And he said, you know, he had those, because we discussed it, we had these, those quantum moments where he's like, oh, should I suggest that I drive her home? Should I, you know, walk her to her front door? That kind of thing. And in those moments he did it. And of course, your bravery is others' thrills. Okay, so, so back yourself, okay? Be, be intelligent, be consensual. And if you're really, really struggling, if you're not getting where you wanna be with your game, don't just follow these videos. You are allowed to work with somebody like me in person, think about it, plan it three or four months in advance. Do one of the four-week naturals, 33-day coaching with me and you and a group of really, really good students in one of the most amazing cities around the world. Um, and uh, it'll take your game two or three levels ahead of where it already is right now. I'm Alex from the Four Week Natural, head coach, pickup artist and media content creator. Really glad to speak to you. Subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up if you liked it, recommend it to your friends who you think need it, and I'll speak to you.